So in this demonstration, we're going to show you how to work with Gantz. Gantz show time-related activities. Um, in our case, we have a business object here called projects. And if you look at the data, we have a list of projects. Um, those are the projects. They all have a start date and they also have an end date. One more thing that they have is they have a mapping to the department that owns them. And this comes from the department object. So there's a relationship between the two. All right, so let's first look at uh, your trivial Gantt. So if you just need a simple Gantt, you can just go over, bring a Gantt over to your page. There's a quick start to add the data. You can go over to your projects, uh, select the fields that you want to show. So actually, we start with a start date. So start date, end date, and the project name. You can also set the timeline that you're using here. And when you click Finish, you'll have a Gantt chart over here showing you that if we switch to live mode, by the way, you'll see, for example, that the um, labels are on the side. But you can also move those labels in. And um, all you have to do is go over here and, and to the task defaults. And there's a label position. Well, you can say, for example, that it needs to be in the inner center. Okay, so this would be over here. No. Okay, so a little clearer to see this way. Um, so that's the basic Gantt. Now, in this case, what you have is each task is on a separate row in your Gantt. Now, in some cases, you might want to have a Gantt where there's also um, multiple items on a row. And Gantt actually allows you to do it. There's actually a lot of capabilities and advanced things that you can do with Gantt. If you look at the Jet Cookbook examples for Gantt, you can see, for example, this hierarchy concept. Okay. And um, we're going to show you how to use the multiple task per row. So this is, for example, when you have a person and all the tasks that this person is supposed to do are in the same row. So to do that, you need a set of data. If we look at the data that they uh, use for this, you can see that we have the name of the person. Okay. And um, this is an array of all the people. Okay. So you would have, for example, um, Chris and then Christine, etc. And for each person, you have the name. Okay. And then you have the shifts, which are kind of the tasks that we're using here. So the tasks are also an array inside here, and it has a set of properties. So if we want to achieve this in our application, we have the department and we have the project. So this would be the parent and this would be the child. One thing you would want to do is make sure that the relationship that you have from the parent, you enable the accessor to allow the parent, the department, to access the projects. And then you have an accessor name here called Projects Collection, okay, like that. Um, so this is important because now you would need to create a, say, a population of this data in your page. So now let's take this Gantt chart and switch it to be based with um, a left side detail of the departments. So the first thing you would want to know, do is look up over here in the properties for the properties of the uh, row axis. Okay. And you can go in here and you can turn it on. Okay. So this would give you a space here to show something in the row axis. Now the other thing is that the data that we're getting right now is not in the right format uh, as what we need. So I'm going to um, go over uh, and look up uh, right now. We have the task data. What we now need is row data. So we can remove this reference to the SDP. The Gantt kind of disappears, but we're going to switch over to the code view and you'll see it's still here with all the settings for start and end and stuff like that that are needed. All right, so um, what we need now instead of a task template is we need two other templates. If you look at the code over here in the example in the Jet Cookbook, you would see that we have a template for the row mapping and a template for the task mapping template. Okay, so we're going to copy those two. 
and place it in inside our uh, Gantt. Okay, so you can now see we have two templates and a Gantt row and a Gantt task structure. So now let's go and get the data. So we need, as we said, um, in terms of structure, we need an array inside another array. We'll go first and define a data type. And we can remove this data type because this is the one that was used by the SDP. We don't need it anymore. And we don't need the SDP anymore, so we can also remove this. All right, so in the types, we're going to create a new type from the endpoint. And we're going to look at the structure for a department. So we're going to look at the get department. And what we need from a department is the department and the ID, potentially. And then we also have access to the project collection. Okay. And here we have items and we can pick up, for example, the project name, start date and end date. And we can also pick ID if we want to or any other property that we need to reference. Um, so let's click to create. Now, if you look at the structure that we have now, you would see that the structure that is created is not exactly um, array inside the object, but there's an object and inside this object there's an array. And that's not what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and say go to source and you can see the parent collection object over here. We don't actually want it. So I'm going to remove this line and the corresponding line for the closing brackets and I'm going to reformat So now if we look at our data type, okay, so the data type is called get department and it has basically an object with an array directly inside it with these properties. Great. So now that we have this, we can go over and create a variable. Now the, um, the um, Gantt needs an ADP. So I'm going to create my ADP variable and I'm going to use an array data provider. The type for this array data provider is our get department type and the key attribute for our case we can use department for example. Okay. Now we need to assign a value into this um, ADP. Okay. So the first thing we are going to do is um, we can actually go to the Gantt over here and um, look up the property called row data, okay, and map the ADP to be the base for this row data, okay, and now let's populate it. So we're going to define an event when we enter the page, uh, so not a custom event, sorry, we're going to define an event where we enter the page, the event listener here would be for VB enter, and we're creating this action chain here, and we're going to call it, for example, load data. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to call the REST service to get information about all our departments. Okay. So this would get us all the department. Now, we also want to know the projects for each department. And for this, we're going to use the expand parameter to this query. So for the expand, we're going to specify the name of the accessor. Um, you probably want to copy it. You don't want any errors here. So for us, it was projects collection. This would tell it to expand all the projects that are for each department. Then we can add a for loop after this. And the for loop would run over the results that we get here in the response over the items, which are basically each department. So I'm going to uh, run the page now just to show you the power of debugging. So if I run the page, nothing shows up in the Gantt yet. That's okay. What we need to do is look at the source code. And I want to show you basically that you now have access to your action chain. And this action chain calls the REST service and returns things into the response. So let's set a breakpoint after we call the REST service and we will reload the page. And we hit this breakpoint after we call the REST service. So now in the response, we have the results. Okay. And what I want to show you here is that you can actually take the response.body and watch it. So um, 
if we add here response dot body okay you would see the result okay so we can even have response dot body dot items if we want to and from here you can see the structure okay so we have an array and um, each array basically has the department name okay and uh, with the department ID and then inside it does the projects collection and inside the project collections we have items and the items are our actual tasks okay so we have um, this task design a logo start date end date stuff like that and this is inside the projects collection items okay now you would probably want to refer to this when you're creating the next piece of code because it's going to help you creating it and in any case we remember that we have inside items department and id and then projects collection dot items now let's go back to our uh, application we're going to finish the run here and go back here now what would we need to do in each one of those loops when we look at a department we want to create a little variable Okay, so we'll create a variable, we'll call it a department, for example. And this is going to be an object. Right? And then we need to set the value. Um, you can set the value here. I'm going to switch over to the code very quickly. Um, so here's our line. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an object here. Um, so the object is going to have an ID, which would be the uh, item.id. So the item is what we're looping over. ID is the ID of the department. And then we can have department. And that would be item.department. Right? And then the last thing that we need, again, remember we are looking at this type. So we have department ID, and then we have what we call items. Okay. So what we're adding now is the items and the items refer to item dot projects collection dot items. All right. So this basically creates a row that we are going to load into our ADP. So if we switch back to the design view, this is our assignment. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a fire data provider event and we're going to take our ADP and we're going to use the add event to add a department to it. So what we're doing here again, running over all the department and adding them into an ADP. Nice. So the next thing we want to do is go to the page and we want to um, fine tune our template. Okay. So we start with the row mapping. So in the row, um, the tasks is going to be what we call the items. Okay. The label is going to be the department. And again, those things are being brought in from here, department and items. The next thing we want to do is the task mapping. What are we showing for each task? We're going to show, instead of the task ID, we can actually use the project in our case. The start date is called in our case start date uh, the end is called end date and the label would be again the project i'm actually not going to use this attribute so i'm going to remove this one okay so we can see no errors here um, and let's see if running the page now would get us the result we need so we're hitting our breakpoint. We don't need this breakpoint anymore, so we can remove this one. And um, you can see our results are already showing up here. If we zoom out, you can now see each department showing up on the axis. And then the task for that department are shown in here.